Universal precaution, Tarmane, you assume everybody is positive. Yes. Sir, I have a positive case, positive negative, I have a microscope. I have a doctor who said, do not do test. Otherwise, the hospital is already gone. It's already gone. Sir, I have a problem, sir. Okay. Uh, sir, I have a problem. Okay. 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 Tushar Bhai, you can start now. Assalamu alaikum, uh, respected physicians. Welcome you all in today's AC study group presentation. Today is our 64th lecture session. We, uh, as earlier sessions, we uh, divided the program into two sections. The first part is the introduction to basic components and the lecture will be delivered by Dr. Abdullah Jamil sir. And the second portion, the clinical component will be delivered by our respected Chaudhary Hafiz Hassan sir. Before starting of the procedure or proceedings, I'd like to request Professor M. Atharli sir to introduce Abdullah Jamil sir in front of us, and then we start the proceedings. Atharli sir. Thank you, Dr. Tushar, and good evening, everybody, dear participants and honorable faculties and panelists. I can. I like to welcome uh, Dr. Rupi Kamit sir, Dr. Ashok Dotto, M. Shofik, then Aisha Kader, Abida Tasnim, many others. So, sir, uh, today our, uh, our first presenter is Dr. Abdullah Jamil. Actually, he needs no introduction, but still, I'm happy to say something about Dr. Abdullah Jamil. Dr. Abdullah Jamil is a man with multiple dimensions, sir. He is a unique person. Actually, he is a cardiologist, interventional cardiologist, electrophysiologist, poet, singer, composer, and possibly many other things I don't know. He is a man with a, and finally, sir, he is a unique human being. Actually, he has got many of the qualities. He is superior to me, I, I can say. He is superior to me. He has got many human qualities that I can follow him. So Dr. Abdul al Zamil is uh, not only such a person, he's also a good presenter. So our first presenter is Dr. Abdul al Zamil, the most important and very difficult presentation today. That is the basic components. Actually, many of our participants actually interested to hear about the basic components. Last day, actually, they told that the basic component is not, this is not the basic. So Dr. Abdul al Zamil, I will request you to uh, present the basic components and he will follow Dr. Professor Choudhury Hafizul Hassan, another man with multiple dimension and uh, actually another person. So he will follow Dr. Abdul Al Jamil. He will show some case presentation. So Rupi Gamet, sir, I like to request Dr. Abdul Al Jamil as a first presentation. Dr. Abdul Al Jamil. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Atar Ali. And uh, you said overwhelmingly about me, but I'm not that much uh, what you presented me before the audience. Uh, today, I, I shall talk on very basic thing. Uh, and these things usually people does not read from the book. Uh, but understanding these things would uh, lead one person to interpret ECG very easily. So let me share my screen. Can you see? No, Jamil. Sir, it's not visible. Might it take some time? Hello, hello. 
now just you started yes, yes sir, sir it's visible now is it visible yes sir yes okay so slide show to you jan sir so uh, i shall be talking on um the abcd of electrocardiography and first uh, the definition of ecg or electrocardiography is the graphical present representation of electrical activity of the heart which is recorded from the surface of the body ecg is recorded by a machine which is a modified galvanometer it records only the electrical potential changes of the heart not the direct electrical activity ecg provides very useful clinical information about myocardial disease electrolyte imbalance drug induced heart disease and drug effect on the heart uh, conduction disorders it is the most commonly used laboratory test for the diagnosis of heart disease let's see the lead system conventionally 12 leads are recorded six limb leads and six pectoral or chest leads limb leads are three standard leads 1 2 3 and three um, unipolar leads and these are augmented avr avl avf so here the v denotes the unipolar lead and a for augmentation r for right l for left f for foot the pectoral leads these are also unipolar leads that's why it is denoted by b and these are the v1 to v6 conventional pectoral leads standard three leads are bipolar leads and are called standard limb leads leads avr avl avf these are unipolar and augmented and also the pectoral leads are unipolar leads electrodes of the limb leads are placed above the wrist and above the feet pectoral leads are placed as follows as everyone knows the v1 in the fourth intercostal space right of the sternum v2 fourth intercostal space left of the sternum then uh, the v4 should be placed on the mid clavicular line at fifth intercostal space and lead c is placed between v2 and v4 uh, mid in a line on the middle point of the line between v2 and v4 v5 is placed on the anterior axillary line from a line a horizontal line drawn from the v4 and that cuts the anterior axillary line that is the point where uh, lead v5 should be placed and the same line cutting the mid axillary line is the point for placing v6 and we also record the right ventricular uh, right sided leads denoted by v3 and here for right uh, pectoral lead v2 become the v1 and v1 become the v2 then v3 v4 v5 v6 six all are placed in similar way just on the right side as in the left placed in the left side these are the position normal position uh, the four limb uh, electrode the right electrode is for neutralization of the all the other limb leads and uh, these are the pectoral leads and v6 on the mid axillary line as denoted in this picture other special leads includes left sided special leads this v7 post, uh, at the same line cutting the posterior axillary line in the fifth intercostal space uh, v8 mid scapular line and v9 left paraspinal border and similar leads on the right side and another one is esophageal lead 
it is placed to the esophagus to the posterior to the left atrium these are the uh, leads uh, that in uh, the ecg form the web form is in different leads shown according to, to the picture uh, where the lead is placed and this is the different forms of ecg web form this is a paper small box 1 mm large box 5 mm and usual paper speed it is horizontal boxes standard 25 mm uh, per second voltage calibration the vertical boxes standard 10 mm that is two big boxes half standard 5 mm or uh, millivolt uh this one big box may have 10 or uh, 5 millivolt standard for uh, chest leads half standard for the pectoral leads as some lean thin person and young people have larger complex in the pectoral leads so it needs to be reduced the um, uh, vertical calibration so uh, before interpreting an ecg everyone must look at first the calibration of the voltage this is the ecg paper this is the large box and this small 1 mm box uh conductive system as told in the two weeks earlier by professor athar ali the sinusoidal node internodal pathways these are uh, functional there is no such histological pathway can be demonstrated uh, atrioventricular node bundle of his bundle branches right and left left bundle divides into anterior and posterior fascicle parkinson fibers this is a picture that shows the sn node this these are thought to be internodal pathways they converge to the ab node situated at lower portion of the interatrial septum near the tricuspid valve and this is a bundle of hitch um, uh, and it divides into left and right there is uh, anterofacial and there is a posterofacial is not shown in this picture mode of atrial and ventricular activation atrial muscle is activated longitudinally that is electrical impulse progresses along the fibers ventricular muscle is activated transverse that is the electrical impulse propagates from endocardium to epicardium the atria and ventricles are electrically connected through the fibrous ring only by av node and bundle of his normal this picture shows this propagation longitudinally along the fibers of the atrial muscle and in the thick ventricle it propagates from endocardium to epicardium basic wave forms of the ecg first is t wave it represents the depolarization of atrial muscle here is complex it represents the depolarization of ventricular muscle t wave represents the pol- depolarization of ventricular muscle muscle uf thought to represent the repolarization of intraventricular or parkinsonian conductive system there is a uh, diagrammatic representation of different wave forms this uf the qr is complex qf uf and here is the pr segment uh, the st segment and we shall come to the segment and intervals later now the intervals of the ecg pr interval it is the interval between two consecutive uh, rr interval sorry uh, it is the interval between two consecutive r waves pp interval it is the interval between two consecutive q waves pr or pq interval is the interval between the onset of q wave and the onset of qrs complex is the time taken 
for propagation of electrical impulse from SA node to ventricular muscle. QT interval, it is the interval between onset of Q web to the end of T web. It represents the duration of electrical systole. Segments of the CG, the two segments is PR segment. It is that portion of the ECG tracing from the end of T web to the onset of QRS complex. It is normally isoelectric. ST segment, it is that portion of the T web. So this uh, picture uh, uh, denotes the different in segments and interval. Here first this uh, PR segment that from the it begins from end of the PR and beginning of the QRS complex. Yes, this segment from the end of QRS complex to the beginning of QR. Uh, PR interval from the beginning of QR to the beginning of QRS complex and QRS duration from onset of QR, QR the end of the QRS complex. And ST interval is from the end of QRS complex to the end of T web. How the waveforms are inscribed? Electrical activity flows from negative to positive. If the resultant force of the electrical activity is parallel to the axis of the particular lead and flow towards the positive pole of that lead, it will inscribe positive deflection. If the resultant force of the electrical activity is parallel to the axis of the particular lead and flows away from the positive pole of that lead, it will inscribe negative deflection. If the resultant force of electrical activity is perpendicular to the axis of the particular lead, if it will inscribe neither no deflection or a small equiphasic deflection. So this, uh, this denotes the axis of the lead, the negative pole, this positive pole. When the electric resultant factor is exactly parallel to the uh, axis of the lead, then it will inscribe positive large deflection. If it is little bit angulated, the uh, deflection will be smaller. More it goes away from the uh, axis of the lead, it, it becomes more smaller. Similarly, if it goes away from the positive pole, it will give neg negative deflection. And when it is perpendicular, it gives equiphasis or no reflection. So here, uh, according to the these three arrows color, three colored arrows, from here we can understand this activation of the septum, which is first in the ventricle. It inscribes initial R wave. Then most of the uh, electrical force is away from this area. So it inscribes in uh, uh, negative deflection. Again, it goes towards a little bit towards the uh, electrode. So it can, again, it becomes positive. Similarly, in lead three, AVF in different lead, according to the position of the lead, yeah, the waveforms are changing. And also in the pectoral lead, uh, from uh, V1 to V6, gradually it changes its morphology. Somewhere it is um, equal and then again become upright. There are three waveforms of ECG uh, waves. One, there is one waveform is monophasic, only R wave or QS pattern. Two waveforms, the diphasic, either RS pattern or QR pattern. Three waveforms, the triphasic. This R, S, and R dash pattern, they commonly say is M pattern, and another is Q, R, S pattern, 
this W pattern. Now the electrical axis, the most difficult thing in interpreting in ECG, uh, for, for especially for the beginners and fellows. Also called vectors, two types of axis, frontal plane axis and horizontal plane axis. Frontal plane axis is determined from the standard limb leads. So, uh, and uh, augmented limb leads. First, we come to the standard triaxial referral system. The upper one is this lead one, negative pole in the right arm, positive pole in the left arm, lead two, negative pole in the right arm, positive pole in the foot. Lead three, negative pole in the left arm and positive pole in the foot. If we uh, shift these lines toward the center, it looks like this. So uh, one lead is away uh, from another lead by 60 degrees. So it uh, divides, there are uh, six deg uh, degree we can get from the center. So this will, this will help us for calculating axis. Then the unipolar lead triaxial referral system. Here, the unipolar leads, that is augmented AVR, AVL, AVF leads. These are perpendicular to the standard leads. So here is the AVR. It is perpendicular to the lead three. The AVF perpendicular to the lead one and AVL perpendicular to the lead two. So here also, these are the uh, equidistant with 60 degrees. So if we, if we combine these two uh, uh, and plot on each other, so it looks like this, putting the heart in the center. And so there is every angle here again is divided from 60 to 30 degrees. So each lead uh, is separated by 30 degrees. So AVL uh, lead one, 30 degrees um, AVR positive pole. Um, then lead to six, at 60 degrees, lead AVF at 90 degrees, lead three at 120 degrees, lead AVL at 150, actually, um, it's positive and it's 180 degrees. Similarly, then the negative, the other portion, you know, here. So this is called the hexaxial referral system. And if we can remember this, and uh, it is easy to calculate uh, the uh, excess. But I would suggest for the, the uh, undergraduate and fellows, to draw this uh, hexaxial referral system and put in front of your text, uh, study this. Look at it in the morning after rising from bed and also before going to the bed. So this way you can memorize this picture. So examine six frontal limb leads. Uh, that is uh, standard fillets and augmented fillets determine the most equiphysic QRS deflection where it is present in, among these six leads. Inspect the perpendicular lead to it where the QRS complex will be dominant upright and the QRS axis is directly towards the positive pole of that lead. Normal frontal plane QRS axis is minus 30 to 110 degrees. The sum of three to consider is from zero to 90 degrees. Horizontal plane axis uh, determined from six chest leads, and it is rarely used in clinical practice. So this is the picture, this is the uh, horizontal plane, and it is determined from the QRS, um, from the six pectoral leads. This is one, um, uh, ECG of normal ECG. So if we look at the normal Q waves, normal QRS complex, normal Q waves, 
and if we want to calculate the QRS axis, the most peaking physic is at lead standard one. And the perpendicular to this is lead area. And on the other, uh, either side of the ABF is lead two and lead three. So here the lead three is the uh, lead two is larger than the lead three, so it is more towards the lead two, which is situated at the 60, and this is at 90, it is in between 60 and 90. So it may around uh, 70, 75 degree is the axis of this ECG. And another uh, way of uh, interpreting axis is rule of thumb. It's very easy. Put your thumb on the standard um, on uh, uh, lead uh, two and ABL, and which way that it is um, uh, seen, and uh, that from that which is apart, that is the axis. That was the rule of thumb uh, is calculated, but uh, it's not accurate. Exceptional referral system is the accurate. So thank you very much uh, for uh, patience hearing. I just presented the basic thing of electrocardiography and for the normal waveform and normal QRS complex and association with pathology would be a separate lecture in future. Thank you very much. Um. Jamil, thank you for wonderful talk. I, I just uh, want to take a couple of minutes and uh, about this. I mean, this is a super lecture for the audience. It's a very Jamil, simple lecture. Stop. <clears throat> it's a very simple lecture, but that's what we need to learn. Simple and basic thing are fundamentals of medicine or any knowledge and to brush it up every day, as Jamil said. I want to talk. Like, yes. I, I wanted to add, this is excellent, but I want to add one thing. Um, for each of these, if there is a case, because you know, I mean, basically, master, I mean, this is a public a, 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 the example, the double speed at EKG. Please, Hafiz, it's on live, actually. Huh? Nah, case this should look like better. Uh, attraction oh, yeah, okay. Better. Sure, sure. Uh, but this, but this was a, actually a basic fundamental lecture. I want to say two thing, a few things about Jamil. I mean, when I grew up, I learned from my teachers two things: their knowledge, but that was the minor part. I always studied the individual. You look at Jamil. He looks like a religious person, and he is a religious person. That's one. Number two, he leads a life of religion. That is more important than being religious. Third, what he has done, he's a musician and a poet. That means he has shown that there is no conflict between culture and religion. And this is an unique individual. I, I consider it a privilege to know him. And I would like all of you to learn from this guy. Thank you. I want to say that Srota Ishebe, Ajahn Bhalo Shilpir Kasteko, Kasamra Amadir Abidon Kutteberi. Lotta Mungesh Karko, Amra Bolteberi, Zoe Gantagan, Eva Vegano Levalo. Akak is staged at Akaki. I'm sure about this. Tell me. Thank you so much. You're welcome. After you have the correlation of normal and disease, this is your first of all, audience kids with the appeal at a challenge to then. What do you think about this EKG? Half will be thinking differently, and then you say you pay attention. And in this regard, I want to give a compliment to Dr. Orun Maski's team. I have noticed when somebody from Nepal starts reading EKG. They actually say the calibration as a as a as a as a rule uh, or as a, uh, as a as a as the presentation. So that means you are paying attention to the calibration. Um, that's like and then pay heart rate and blood pressure and all that.
I would uh, arrange another separate lecture. What you are uh, asking for was the, was the different different uh, standard standardization ECG, uh, different um, speed uh, ECG with different speed, uh, and also uh, different waveforms, normal variation. I would try to collect those things and show in another day. So, uh, Choudhury, Choudhury Hassan. Ji. Ji, now the floor is yours. Uh, I'm trying to get this. Um... Share screen. Uh, at the second done. I mean, আমি কিছু জিনিস এটা নরে না কেন এই যে স্ট্যান্ডার্ডাইজেশন কি ইম্পর্টেন্ট দিস ইজ স্ট্যান্ডার্ডাইজেশন 1 মিলি পার 10 মিলি মিটার সেই পেশেন when it is 20 মিলি মিটার it looks like the other way then this is 2.5 millimeter and uh, 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 that's what i was paying attention you are saying uh, asking for the example we are have some example and tamil bhai has mentioned some of the ecgs has 10 by 5 calibration 10 millimeter for the limb leaves and 5 millimeter for the uh, uh, precordial leaves that's an example for that and the speed is so important. Uh, 25 millimeter per second, same patient, when it goes into 10 millimeter per second, it loses tachycardia. When it is 50 millimeter per, uh, millimeter per second, it looks like uh, bradycardia. These are important things. As you have said, the examples are actually can show what we can find. Sir, I'm going to ask you sir. Dr. Shopping. Sir, uh, uh, two, uh, uh, 20 millimeter per volt, the either 20 millimeter per two volt. Actually, the ECC is done by one millivolt. When we increase the volt, it would be tw uh, 20 millimeter. If we decrease the volt, that is 0.5 millivolt, then uh, the uh, vertical, uh, uh, vertically, it would be five millimeter. So, no, uh, uh, Shopping, actually, yes, the standardization is done. The standard is J one millivolt will be 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter, right, sir. But you if can we... make it one millivolt equal, equal uh, producing a 20 millimeter deflection or no, a sir. 0.5 sir, millimeter. That is, that is a, that, 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 that's what I want to know. Actually, sir, if we can make it two millivolt, then it would be 20 millivolt, uh, millimeter. If we do the ECC by two millivolt, then it would be 20 millimeter. That why, that is how, we decrease by divide the uh, total QRS complex by two to get the actual uh, voltage. I'm confused what you were no, saying. No, 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 no. Shobhi. I'm confused, uh, totally uh, confused. Shobhi, what you were actually, Shobhi, you have to calculate always one millivolt equal to five millimeter, one millivolt equal to 10 millimeter, or one millivolt. One millivolt is, one millivolt is the standard. So that's one equal to deflection will be yes. somewhat uh, yes. more one or less. Maybe equal to five millimeter, 10 millimeter, 20 millimeter, 40 millimeter, 50 millimeter, whatever you like. But one millivolt is fixed. 
But this is, is done by one millivolt. One millivolt. One millivolt. One millivolt one equal to deflection is produced in a different lengthwise. Amplification will be a, a, as you wish. So I think so. The Abdul Hassan, he's ready. I think. Thank you, Professor so. Abdullah Choudhury, for showing the basic things again. Sir, in the meantime, one of our participants asked why the AVR, AVL, and AVF called augmented leads. Sir, Sir. you can discuss this issue during the actually Choudhury half is lake, sir. Na? Okay, sir. Start, to start, start the lake, sir. Okay, sir. No, that, there was delay, that's why I asked the thing. So, Duri. Hafizah, is there? Yes, sir. Hafizah is there, but he's a. Uh... Hafizah, you can start. Hafizah, we're seeing your slides. Sir, can you please start? Hafizah, you are mute. Please unmute. Me? Uh, now oh, can you hear me? Okay. So, sorry. Uh, 48 year old. Uh, with heart failure, EF35, uh, that's a mistake, uh, now 55 because he recovered from non-ischemic cardiomyopathy. And then if this is the medications. What do you think about this EKG? Do you want volunteers? Yeah. So, Ali, any volunteers from Nepal? Sir, shall I try, sir? Yes, sir. <clears throat> yeah. Vishal Srishta, welcome. So, good evening, respected sirs. So, this is a 2L lead ECG with rhythm strip taken in standard calibration with regard to speed and <coughs> voltage. We showed a regular narrow complex type at the rate around 120, 130, sorry, 170, 180. And uh, the, uh, the rate is around that. The P by P is, uh, there is short RP tachycardia. The RP segment is uh, less than the PR segment. And uh, the axis, is normal and yes sir so i think this is at a short rp short rp super good yes rovik bhai will you add, add anything hey interesting happy you showed this ecg yesterday there's a patient at the clinic actually on friday <laughs> came with heart failure symptoms and was in a tachycardia exactly like this um, and then we looked up that she basically was in tachycardia for days, if not months, mm -hmm. um, causing a weak heart. I mean, so I agree with his uh, evaluation. I mean, supraventricular tachycardia, there is a possible P wave. Rate is 166. So it's a little right. too fast for two to one flutter, a little too slow for um, um, one to one flutter. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so it's a re entrant tachycardia. Um, so, so, and, uh, and then, there is a little bit of voltage, maybe LVH. And then I would request you not to read too much on the ST segment and AVR. Sometimes the emergency room physicians read too much into it and then call for multi-vessel and left main. Uh, in, a, in a situation of uh, tachycardia uh, and, and some underlying LVH, uh, it is not, not better not to overread. So what happened that Adenosine given, and this was the rhythm. And remember, this is a patient with recovered non ischemic cardiomyopathy. EF now better, it was 35 before, now 55. 
and this is the EKG. So uh, the physician from Nepal, I congratulate you because I think I would agree with you. But that is like, now this is for higher level. Uh, if you can tell me that what are these extra heartbeats and where they are coming from. And this one I collected because I was thinking, oh, AVNRT, adenosine, good beta blocker home, think about ablation if there is a recurrence. But then this EKG makes me wonder what else is going on. And I was thinking, I was, I was hoping the Rovik Bhai will be in the audience. Um, what do you think, the physician from Nepal? I'm sorry, I forgot your yes, name. So, Michelle. Michelle. Yes. Michelle. Okay. Right. So, so there is every third bit, there is a, one extra, extra bit that is white complex with RVV morphology. I think there is, it comes uh, almost, maybe just pre, uh, uh, just uh, pre-excited, like not pre-excited, what is that? Uh, PACs like thing. So I think this I is uh, PACs with aberrant conduction, every third bit. Mm. Another DD would be obviously the ventricular bit, but I will, Go more on supraventricular bit with the uh, average. Uh, okay. Every third. Every third yeah. in first, second, first, second, third, and four, four weeks. But you think that the compensatory pause and this is multiple of that? Uh, but I, yeah, yes, sir. I have to calculate those uh, by calculate, like time, time frame. If there is a uh, not exact compensation, then I'll think more is the, because this RVV is more common in uh, aberrancy. Yeah. Can I just, um, Michelle, let's work yes, with sir. it. So it's the premature bit, no question about it. It's a white yes. QRS premature bit. So, and of course in lead V1 looks like right bundle, but look at it, that is the initial key wave. So that kind of takes away the typical aberration of right bundle morphology. And if you look at AV lead one, also the terminal S is too deep for right bundle. So clearly the beat is coming from the left side, but I do not believe that this is a right bundle aberration. That's number one. Number two, if you look at the pause, it's basically the RR interval in the during sinus beat is 560 millisecond, and it's exactly double the interval in between the P, holding the PVC is, is double of that interval. So between these two, it makes the pentacular premature bit more likely than a um, aberration. And in lead one, the uh, aberrant bit, it completely changes the axis. Usually if it is aberrancy to remain, the, the aberrancy, the change of axis is not there. So- Abhij Bhai, can uh, I, I say something? Abhij yeah. yeah. can I say something? Yeah. The morphology of the premature bit in the V1 is QR pattern. And inferior lead is two, three way positive. It is most likely arising from the AMC that is automatical continuity. Okay. So, <laughs> so first of all, I, I would uh, uh, ask the audience that to notice that how Rafik Bhai explained this like a medical student, you know, uh, that's very amazing. And the second thing is that uh, that was Mosin, right? This, the so we are, yeah, we are like uh, general cardiologists. Let's let's so let's follow. Like you are EP guy, you jumped, um, and I'm going to come to that. Uh, so this is right bundle pattern looks like PVC coming inferior axis. So coming from the outflow tract and most likely probably from the RVOT or can it be LVOT? So the transition um, transition is in B3, B4, right? So right band pattern suggests origin in LV, left ventricular pattern suggests RV or I, I, LV, IV septum, but inferior axis is outflow tract. But here is the caveat that is it coming from the aortomitral 
like a, or is it from purely right ventricular outflow tract uh, or L L LV outflow tract? Because uh, the the uh, LV this is more of an RBB pattern. So is Sovik by any comment? Um, no. No, the question is it's, uh, whether it's coming from the right or left side. That's the issue. And then, of course, if we go into more detail into this business, uh, yeah. which will be beyond the scope of this lecture, yeah. then you look at transition. Simple. Remember, half is actually showing the transition to see which part is coming from to give us some idea of it. Right. Yes. But so, I, I think, Rafik, by for generally speaking, we don't need to worry too much about it as long as no. we can say that. This is coming from the outflow tract and it is PVC. Yeah. What do we do with this patient? EKG from the previous admission was like this. And now we are seeing extra heartbeat to convince you that the structurally normal heart now, LV is normal. Oh, so I wanted to ask you that whether you agree with the recommendation to give flaconite at this point. Patient has non-ischemic cardiomyopathy, so flaconite can be used. Non-ischemic cardiomyopathy and recovered, yeah, so which yeah. is much better. So, so I, I was not, I don't normally like to give flaconite, but I think beta blocker alone would have been okay. And then follow up. And if it is too much symptomatic, then think about EP ablation. But this is just one observation so we can follow up. Interesting. Can I make a, can I make yeah. a comment? Yeah. The question is, why do we treat an arrhythmia? That's the basic question. One is primary is to increase survival, number one. Number two, to prevent something from happening in future. Like if somebody is in SVT incessant, we have to take care of the other, they will, otherwise they will develop. Third will be symptomatic. Somebody with history of cardiomyopathy, I will be very reluctant to use flaconite. Yeah. And ejection fraction now is 50%, right? Yeah. Yeah, 55. so it's not normal. It, so even if it is normal, I, I'll be very hesitant. I mean, if you want to use something, one drug that can be considered is Sotalol, which is a beta blocker, mm -hmm. and it may help. PVC ablation, of course, is a, a huge big territory. The question would be who to ablate. Um, I personally don't ablate okay. just for symptom. I, I go for um, if Maximum somebody has cardiomyopathy. Therapy. Yes, if, if it helps long term. But this is an uh, interesting case of it. So what was what did they do EP study on the SVT? What did they find? No, he, this is on follow up. Yeah. Uh, so please bring uh, it back. Yeah. I, I think this probably has a concealed <coughs> accessory pathway rather than a venodre entry. So please oh, let you me mean follow the, up. The initial arrhythmia, the yes, SVT. Be, yes, because the if the notch was in the T wave rather than in the ST segment. So the RP interval is more than 80 milliseconds and that supports more concealed pathway, but a lot of times we are wrong. So I'm, I'll be curious to see yes. what, what the result comes back. I don't know, Rafik, why this exists, but sometimes we talk about short <coughs> RP and then long RP. Sometimes yes. there is an intermediate RP. <laughs> oh, yes, no, no question. Thank so you. Can I ask you a question? Yes, yeah. please. Uh, this patient recovered on Coreg and the ejection fraction come out to from 35 to 55. But yes. if we started Sotalol, uh, yes. can the EF suffer? Oh, so the question is, let's give you an extreme scenario. Somebody with ejection fraction of 35% or 30 to 35% Neoc heart class two symptom normal kidney function, has an ICD as having recurrent VT and the patient is 55 years old. We can actually carefully start Sotalol. So the problem with Sotalol, that Sotalol will not depress LB function, but it can precipitate heart failure. 
Yes. So, of course, as the ejection fraction goes up, then we become less worried about it. So that will be the thing. And the reason I, we, we use a lot of sort along nowadays because it's a, it's, it has no long-term side effect because once you start amiodarone or drugs like that, you, you cannot go backward. It's very difficult to do that. And I have not right. seen any study on using carvedilol and sotalol together. No. But often, often we see the electrophysiologist and heart failure guys, they use it sometimes. They oh. use both, which is oh. amazing to me because, well, because of the same, same fear of just what it said. Yeah. Oh, no, Hafiz, I agree with you. We have combination, very few, because mm -hmm. um, if somebody's ejection fraction 35%, let's say was 20%, improved to 35 on carvedilol, I'll be very hesitant to decrease carvedilol. Yes. In those patients, I'll right. avoid. I'm talking about somebody where, if, in this patient, where you can, you can, keep on a follow-up and, and try it. Yeah, and I was more in favor of just maximizing carvedilol low dose and follow-up rather than use uh, flaconide. Uh, oh, definitely. I, yeah. No, no question. I mean, listen, this PVC will be fine. I mean, the patient has improved. Yeah. I'll tell the patient, live with it. Yes. <laughs> yes. So uh, next patient is a 63-year-old lady came into the ER history of COPD. And this rhythm is anyone. This is a very easy one. Anyone from Nepal? Hello? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir, shall I try? Good evening, yes, sir. sir. Yes, Sharma. Yes, sir, shall yes. I try? Sharma, go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, this is a 12 year ECG uh, calibrated uh, with 10 millivolt per, uh, uh, per millivolt with the speed of 20, uh, 25 millimeter per second. Uh, in this ECG coming to the rhythm strip, there is, although it is uh, irregularly irregular rhythm, I could see uh, some PO in between this and uh, PR is it is variable and even POF looks uh, multiple uh, multiple uh, morphological POF are there and uh, it is irregularly irregular rhythm and uh, QRS uh, it uh, looks LBBB uh, type of morphology and. Uh, and EST segment, uh, it's so it's uh, likely, sir. Uh, it is irregularly irregular rhythm with uh, uh, multiple. There are uh, different morphology of PO with the history of COPD. Uh, it looks like uh, multifocal atrial tachycardia with LBBB morphology, sir. Right. So tachycardia or bradycardia? Tachycardia. Regular or irregular? Irregular. Irregular. Narrow or wide? Wide complex. Wide. So, so uh, the irregularly irregular or regularly irregular? Irregularly irregular. Irregularly irregular. So, so it is the differential is AFib or multifocal atrial tach in this case. And then, so this uh, patient then came back to sinus rhythm with this EKG. What is the explanation of the previous EKG? Now that one dose of IV metoprolol reverted back to this rhythm. Sir, uh, uh, this rhythm is a sinus rhythm, sir. With right. the LVV, uh, changed into the uh, narrow complex uh, rhythm, right. sir. So patient had uh, a history of uh, catheter-related uh, thrombosis from the dialysis catheter, it started on aliquis, and then metropolal went home. LV function was normal. And uh, the question is that, what is the uh, mechanism of rate-related lip bundle? Um, and you can read this in the book, is the phase three issues, and faster rate, and you get the lip bundle morphology. 
uh, and then uh, because the LV function normal, we did not feel compelled to uh, do ischemia workup in the hospital. Troponin was negative, so all good. So we are running out of time. Let me finish with this case because this is way more interesting to me. 47 year old with chest discomfort and then no dyspnea cough or leg swelling, recent history of non adherence to the alcohol, al uh, uh, so the, to medicine, and then alcohol binge, and uh, history of liver issues. INR is high without coumadin, bilirubin is abnormal, and then these are the vitals blood pressure good, heart rate a little bit high, temperature normal. And this is the baseline EKG on arrival. Anyone to make any comment? Sinus rhythm all inferior. And that's what I read. And the patient had more discomfort in the ER, uh, belly, epigastric, and then went to this. So let me show you this. This is old inferior sinus rhythm. That's the way we read it. And this is the rhythm in the ER. What's going on? Monos Koyala. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, good, good evening, sir. Hey, Monos. Yeah. Ah. Uh, sir, this is the ECG of this uh, patient. And this is 12 ECG. And the calibration is not so near, probably normally calibrated. Normally and, calibrated. Uh, yeah, normally calibrated. Sorry, I, Here I we can cut out the lower panel. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yes, yeah, we can see the on the left, on the right, we can see the one millivolt. This is the normally calibrated. And uh, so, in this so if you compare with the previous EKG, previous patient, this yeah. is tachycardia. This is white yes, complex. Is white this complex is regular. Yes. Is yes. it too wide or white complex? <laughs> Uh, sir, uh, this ECG is uh, in V1, it is a positive, so it is a right bundle bronze block type. And if it is more than 140 milliseconds, it is wider. It is a wide, uh, it's more suggestive of uh, um, uh, ventricular tachycardia, sir. So this is a wide and more than 140 milliseconds, I can see in V1. And we can, I can see here. The um, uh, concordance, the QR complex, the RS complex are uh, discordant. Uh, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5 are concordant. V6 is discordant, and uh, and the uh, the RS RS distance uh, is less than 100 here, and um, uh, less than 100. I think, sir, it is a uh, uh, white complex tachycardia with uh, uh, aberrancy, probably. Uh, supraventricular tachycardia with aberrancy, sir. And uh, the AVR, we can see here in AVR, the AVR, the first, uh, there is a negative, the negative portion is uh, there in AVR. Uh, so calculating BIBT is also, I think, more than one, uh, less than one. Um, and I can't see, I cannot see here any fusion bit or any capture bit here. So I think it is a supraventricular tachycardia with aberrancy, sir. My opinion. Okay, so what you said, your observations, um, I, your observations, I totally agree. But let me tell you this uh, non-EP way of saying things. And then I'm going to ask Rafik Bhai to say EP way. So, and make it interesting. So non-EP way is the following. Whatever you said is good, but it is really white complex tachycardia. Nobody will disagree with that. And it is, it is also important that there is a distinct pathologic Q wave in the inferior loop. That is no way near uh, a physiologic Q wave. I think everybody in this room will agree that this is a dist And you may even argue, is there any recent MI in that because of the ST elevations in the inferior loop? And the patient had some uh, discomfort. So you need to take, up the, uh, take the context also. So with that pathologic Q wave, present and the patient presenting with white complex tachycardia and in the ER. So if we, I don't want you to bet, but if you want to bet 
for the white complex tachycardia differential being VT versus SVT with aberrancy. Where will you put your money in? <laughs> you will put your money in VTAC until proven otherwise. But you keep that in mind. And life sometimes favors you. Patient dropped blood pressure, the shock. And then the EKG came back like can this. You, Afis, can you go back, body. please? Yeah. Go back, please. I, I was waiting for you, but I'm just giving you the non EPUA. Okay. Of saying so what, also, what was, I think, what by, I, I'm sorry, I missed a little. Almost 160. Yeah. I missed a little bit. Uh, yeah. What was Manoj's diagnosis? SVT with aberrancy. Okay, fine. I mean, that's a possibility. Yeah. So look at it. White QRS tachycardia of right bundle morphology. So it can be SVT or VT with right bundle aberration. There is no AV dissociation. Look at the QRS duration. QRS duration is is about 160 milliseconds. With the right bundle, QRS more than 140 milliseconds favors VT. Then I cannot see RSR, definite RSR pattern in V1. So that takes it away. Look at the ratio of R wave and S wave in V6, it's less than one. If it were a right bundle aberration, it would be more than one because the R will be bigger than the S wave. Even without the clinical context of anything, if this patient comes to me, I don't know anything about this patient, based on those, it is VT. And even if it is as VT, clinically, we have to treat it as VT. A ventricular yeah. tachycardia, no question about it. Yeah, and then Thank this you. is too wide. And will you have any comment on the axis? Axis. Um, the, 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 if you look at 2, 3 AVF, it's negative. So that means it's coming from the left side from the inferior surface. And yeah. it's a very, very common thing that happens with inferior MI, that you get yeah. a VT between the scar and the mitral annulus. Yeah. And, and that is very important in this case, because I showed you the uh, EKG here. The baseline yeah. EKG, there is a distinct pathologic Q wave uh, present. Which is no question about it. So, yeah. the so and then the explanation that in lead V3, V2, you see looks like a part mm -hmm. of the QRS or maybe a P wave. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, it can be a one to one VA conduction or it can be just part of the QRS. I would not put too much money into it. Sometimes that can be deceiving. So this patient then uh, had this uh, further work of look at the LDL despite, despite the uh, cirrhosis uh, and the troponin was a little bit positive. And this is the EKG after cardioversion. What we do now? The, uh, the platelet count, we love platelets in interventional cardiology. Uh, cirrhosis patient alcohol platelets 49,000. Not good. I mean, I, face, mm -hmm. I mean, it, 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 there is no urgency, but eventually this patient will need the anatomy defined. Okay, so this is the echo first I show you. Yes. This is a uh, definitely was uh, used for um, left ventricular opacification. So any comment, uh, Wadud? And then we did the angiogram. Wadud? Any, any, so LV not, not, not normal. And actually, even with the LV opacification, LV was bad. And this was the angiogram. No surprise that the RCA is uh, several tandem lesions, severe diffuse disease, 
from the mid to distal and the distal is gone. And then you can see that there is a good collateral flow from the left system. And then LAD in the LAO crany projection is good. And the LAD proximal mid and distal looks good. And there is collateral flow going to the right. But here is the problem on the circ system. So the left circumflex gives off the OM branch. And then the, the circumflex itself goes into the groove, but gives a second OM branch. And the ostium of that left circumflex, this is better. After giving off the OM branch, there is an osteal disease. And immediately after that, there is a coronary ectasia. So question is, what do we do now? And this is a time when the electrophysiologist and interventionalist need to come together. What do we do now? Troponin, these are the troponins. Uh, so on admission versus now. And oh. so what do you do now? Well, I think that's, uh, of course, we will always like to have substrate fixed. But, right, but uh, my question it, is, Rafiq Bhai, yes. you saw that this was a monomorphic BT. Yes. And this is the coronary anatomy. Yes. So uh, I see Ashok on the, in the panel. Yes. Ashok, yes, uh, Dr. Yes, Professor Dr. So, yes, um, sorry, I call you on your first name. <laughs> <laughs> just, just we can uh, relook to the right coronary. Yeah. That is the culprit vessel now. Though there is a good collateral, but that occluded, I think, recently occluded. Right. Say is a big vessel. But the, but the, this is a very diffuse disease. But and uh, this, this and vessel, the... if we should, we should fix it. Okay. So. Um, this is the part I do not have. So uh, we thought, uh, Rafiq Bhai, that this is a scar-related VT. The inferior wall was hypokinetic, uh, akinetic. And actually, in some view, looks like dyskinetic. And uh, when we have done this before, that we do a, a viability scan there and then see whether this is viable or not. Do we have any data on this? No. Can you argue that why not uh, go after the right? We thought that going after the right at this late, we may not see much. But uh, if we believe that this is a scar-related BT, then what is the point? Uh, so, but you can disagree. And well, then some, some said that why not fix the circumflex? Hafiz. Yeah. So the, the decision about treating the VT is simple because VT mm -hmm. is not caused by ischemia. You already have a scar. Right. And patient with cardiomyopathy will need a defibrillator. The decision about the um, intervention is a very, very difficult because that, that RCA is a very long lesion and that there is collateral flow. Are you going to gain much if you fix the RCA or are you going to get into more, more trouble trying to fix it? That right, and my and my uh, another big big argument was, and I'm bringing this issue up. So, to be good cardiologist, we also, to be interventionalist or EP, we also need to be good cardiologist. And to be good cardiologist, we need to be good clinicians and internal medicine. My argument to the fellows and to the whole team is that look, if I fix the RCA, this will be a long, full metal jacket. And the platelet count of this patient is 49, okay? So, okay. and the patient has cirrhosis of liver, and the okay, patient has can alcohol, can and history of non-compliance. So, all these to be taken into consideration. About okay. this circumflex, if we fix that, this is basically a, an easy bifurcation lesion. We can fix it, but is it going to solve the problem? And, and we may still have this issue about 
dual antiplatelet stenting. So I was more in favor of not going for anything. But the question is, yeah. Uh, LED is quite good. So I'm, LED. I would go for uh, just VT protection and aggressive intensive medical therapy. Now the VT, for, for the VT, we all agree this will be not a primary prevention. This is a secondary prevention. Yeah. But the secondary yeah. prevention, the, we have no excuse not to put an ICD. Yeah. Will you put an ICD with the platelet count of 48? Why not? Uh, technically, I mean, I have done 50. So it's tough. Um, if there is no aspirin or something, I mean, we have done, I'll give platelet transfusion and then put an ICD in. So, Rohit Bhai, we, we told our electrophysiology colleague that to put an ICD um, and uh, because this is a secondary prevention, it is very difficult not to put an ICD and protect this guy because he had sustained monomorphic VT, dropped blood pressure. So next time that happens, it may kill him. So problem was that, uh, and this is my question to you, ultimately we did not get the access from the left. So we got the access from the right. And was there any, is there any concern that when we put an ICD from the right? So wh why couldn't they get access on the left? Uh, they could not get the access on the left. They could not get any blood back. And they may, they, they thought, well, they tried did, a few times. I don't know exactly. Did they do a venogram? Uh, they did not do any venogram. They did not get any access. Yeah, no, I mean, this, this is the problem part. Yeah. The right side is less effective than on the left side. Right, yeah. Left side. So if somebody has EF for 45, 50, I have no problem putting a right-sided lead. So on the, if the, this guy's EF is very low, and with yes. this kind of disease, uh, I am sure what happened, you were an academic program, it was done by a fellow, <laughs> and fellow did a little bit, he just gave up and went to the right side. That's the typical scenario. I would, before I give up on the left side, I would have done a venogram to make sure that the vein is occluded or not occluded. That's right. the part. And the the other, other the thing, if you, can you show me the picture? I'm going to talk about a little bit. It's a little bit. If you look at that right ventricle, there is the electrode, which is the shocking coil. And then the can is a shocking coil. That, mm -hmm. And then the superior vena cava coil is a shocking coil. A dual coil is not as much effective because all the energy is on the right side rather than on the left side. So uh, that's the problem. Yes, but it works. So, Rohibe, thank you so much because I saw this chest x ray and I told the fellows, what the heck, that why did you do this? And then my question is that in that case, this patient does not need a pacemaker because he never had any bloody issue. Why not sub Q ICD when we have a, because will you trust more a sub Q ICD than a right sided ICD? Okay, so the question is. Subcutaneous versus right-sided ICD. In this patient, I will not. I will avoid a subq ICD because ATP will not work. Second, efficacy-wise, no question. Um, transvenous will be better. Um, right-sided. I would, I would favor a right-sided transvenous over a over a um, subcutaneous. And uh, a subq ICD is good for prophylactic ICDs. That's right. my personal view. For the for the secondary prevention is a real secondary view. prevention. Now uh, I think I I'll I'll, all, I'll go for um, transvenous. Okay, so um, and and my uh, argument uh, to the fellow Hafiz was, Hafiz yeah. Hafiz, can I add something? Yeah. Uh, for the young participants, remember, Rafik Sir was saying this patient has MI, so the VT is related to scar. That means it's a reentrant tachycardia. And if it was acute ischemia, he would have rather VF. That's what he always says, and we should remember that. Like polymorphic VT or VF. Yeah. yeah. 
or polymorphic VT. Yeah. So, uh, and also uh, my uh, re suggestion to the fellow in the round was that when this happens, I don't know, Ravik Bhai, what do you say? I said, you stop the procedure rather than going and jumping and finishing from the right, you can ask the radiologist or you can do it yourself from the brachial site, go with the catheter, visualize the videogram, find out the problem, and then, uh, then, then decide. Uh, sometimes you see persistent left-sided uh, superior vena cava. Uh, sometimes you, 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 you're worried about any pneumo and that has to be sorted out before, because this is not like emergency, emergency to right, put a right-sided ICD right away and then finish the procedure on that day. W would you have deferred this, Rafik Bhai? No. And then go for, I, go for I, more? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you exactly what happened with this patient. Yeah. So initially when I saw the picture, I thought patient was on dialysis. That's why they went on the right side. Yeah. So they did not have an IV on the left side. Right. That's one thing I do. Before I take yes. my patient yes. for any device, yes. I have IV on both sides. And they have made a cut. Before I abandon a cut, I will, I will say, let's move the table. Let's put an IV on the left arm. Let's do a venogram. Yeah. And you find the best person to come and find a puncture. I mean, I have been doing device for many years. Even five, six years ago, I had a case where it was very difficult. I called the radiology person. There is no shame in it. It's just changing a hand can make the puncture easier. Because when mm -hmm. I am doing the puncture, even though I am doing it and I'm changing my position, my brain takes it to the same place, even though I'm thinking I'm puncturing differently. You get a new set of hands, you, they will find it. And th there's nothing to do with experience. I mean, it's just the way we are. Seek help, get somebody to do it. Exactly. And I just wanted to point out to the audience that the, the, it starts with a simple EKG. And this is appropriately, this session is named EKG and beyond. That initial EKG and the clinical presentation, that Q wave, whole totality of the information, how that evolved the patient's care and the decision making is so important because, because this is a secondary prevention this coil is there for a purpose. And if you want a good value for the device, you need to think about the patient in totality. So I thought that this is a very interesting case. And I, my job is also to look at the beyond part of the EKG session. And we have a lot of faculty. I just wanted to share the experience. Sure. I Thank think, you. Shall we stop here today? It's one and a half hour. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Sir, Assalamualaikum. Hello. Habiba. Sir, Assalamualaikum. Sir, I have a question, Chilo, Sir. Sir, it is a monomorphic VT. So, both of us are inferior origin. So, if I say VT ablation is role, Sir. Okay. Shall I answer? Yeah, of course. Uh, Rupik, sir. I yes. knew that this would come. Okay. So. <laughs> We please remember one thing for the audience. A lot of background noise, please. Okay. VT ablation, please remember, VT ablation is not a cure. VT ablation is palliation, especially in a substrate like this. Unless it is idiopathic VT, we are not curing it. So even if I do an ablation, I will have to put a defibrillator in this patient. And ablation in this patient is not a very simple ablation. It's a complex patient. So I will put ICD in. Patient gets one shock once a year or twice a year. I'll do nothing about it. Patient gets VT every week or uh, yeah. every two months. Then I'm going to refer the patient for VT ablation. Um, if uh, medication doesn't suppress it. Medication means in a young person, I will not use the amiodarone. I'll try other medicine yes. if it is available. That was that suggested to big by, and then I said no, because also there's a patient has alcoholic liver disease and cirrhosis. Mm -hmm. So I said, yes. absolutely not. <laughs> Thank but you. we have Thank scientists you. in the team. The fellows are always scientists. I tell them, think about the global. So we did. So I, I apologize to uh, Atar Bhai and Wadud.
I dropped the audience from 101 to 65. Jamil bhai, Jamil bhai, rock music er par amake these are classics. So <laughs> that is going to happen. Sir, Rubik sir, amake ek ek question sir. Amake classic bolse apne rock course. Sir, we single coil and double coil er pura preferential point aavo. Aami ek question le korte jaat chila. I have been traditionally in favor of single coil for the difference between DFT, between single and double coil is actually one joule. It's not a huge difference. If the heart size is normal, let's do it other way. Unless the heart size is very big. And when I talk about very big, I talk about seven to eight centimeter or above. I, we use single coil lead because if you ever have to extract the lead, the main point where it get adhesion and which can be dangerous is superior vena cava. And yeah. that's why uh, we have switched mostly to single coil lead at this point. So Rohit, but that's a very interesting issue. So I routinely, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, we are not doing NIPs routinely, but in these patients, I actually demanded NIPs, non-invasive program stimulation. Um, any comment on that, Rohit? Um, Traditionally, I have tested all my patients. But if you look at uh, patients um, that have low EF, I always test them. If the EF is over 35 or more, I know it is going to work. And in this case, asking for NIPS is an excellent idea. I will do it. So what I do in a patient with VT, I want to know if the ATP works, especially also, when you have put a device on the right side, I will definitely test it, make sure it works. And people have a tendency to avoid testing when the EF is low. But guess what? That is the person that's going to die when the ICD will not work. That is the person yes. you need to test. So, so this is like, um, Ashok, this is like routine aspiration in yes. STEMI. So mm -hmm. routine uh, NIPS is not needed, Jack publication, mm -hmm. but there are some exceptions. And this is yeah. one of them. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, Abdul Adul Chaudhary, please. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, today we have discussion about the very basic things, and then the complex decision that comes from a very simple presentation, resulting into complex situation, and then decision about a complex situation why this should not be done, why that should be done. What we need is explanation is easy term, and that's what we have got here. Thank you, uh, Professor Jamil Bhai. Thank you very much for your nice presentation. And thank you, Professor Rafik Sar and Hafiz Bhai, because you have shown us a thrilling clinical presentation, a simple thing that can result in very difficult situation, what to do and we get some real idea about real case scenarios from that. Thank you very much. So, Ribu, thank you very much. Ribu, we can close. The two weeks again, we'll meet. Thank you. Good night, sir. Good night. Ashok, Jain Karajana, thank you. Thank you, sir. Ashok, what do you think about this? I think you're going to miss it. Ashok, too. Ashok Kaloki, he is my go-to person at Heart Foundation, has, has always, I mean, I get email from people that I don't know from my medical college, and I always jump in, and I have sent patients to Ashok, and he has been gracious enough to take care of those people with very short notice. And I think that's what service is all about. Why do I request for somebody that I do not know? Because I have opportunity to link them up with one of you, and you do this for me and thank you all thank, thank you. you sir that's my pleasure